Before we crack on with the meat of the video, let me just point out that yes, for those who have played the original Destiny long term, this isn't new per se. What Activision and Bungie pulled with Destiny 2 this week is exactly what they've pulled with Destiny. However, being old doesn't mean it ain't bullshit. And with the AAA game industry under so much fire lately for all of its little bullshits, I'm gonna take each and every shot I'm given. Speaking of which, let's open fire on the fact that activities you could do in Destiny 2 a week ago you can't do now unless, of course, you buy the DLC. Here's how it works. Curse of Osiris, the new expansion, came out for Destiny 2 this Tuesday and it raised the level cap of characters. What it also did was raise the level requirements for endgame activities such as Nightfall and Raid, that sort of shite. You now need a power level of 330 in order to engage in these rewarding endgame activities. Problem is, you can't raise your level that high without Curse of Osiris, so you're effectively locked out of all the end game unless you buy this DLC. And if you didn't get it before now, you're also locked out of getting the game's platinum trophy. So if you care about that sort of stuff, you better stump up the green or you should have worked a bit faster. Chop chop, you're on Activision's time, not your own. You thought this was your leisure time? No, 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 no. Activision has a schedule to keep to. You need to keep to it as well, okay? Without beating Prestige Raid or Prestige Nightfall, you cannot get the Prestige Achievement slash trophy, which means you can't 100% it now. Not without spending that extra $20. This is the sort of news I hate to love. I obviously hate the, the game industry's greed once again raises its ugly head, but I love how confessional it is. Just a few weeks ago, we did a Jimquisition talking about the myth of $60 games, how corporate mouthpieces say, oh, well, we never raised the base price from $60, so people are getting more game for less, when really, stuff like this just exposes that excuse for the lie it really has become. Games don't cost $60. It's $60 for the shell game entry fee. I meant that as in the shell of a game, not a shell game, but then I realised we're talking about a game with loot boxes in it, so it's a shell game of a shell game. But these great witticisms are besides the point. What I mean to say is that once again, $60 isn't really getting you the game. The full game is $60 plus whatever it is for the season pass. And even then, like if you buy an Ubisoft game, getting the season pass doesn't mean you're going to get all of the content. There's plenty of DLC outside of a season pass that these companies love to charge you for. I mean, this is a game with a season pass and bright engram loot boxes because of course no amount of money is too much money for these companies. And I see stuff like this where people will spend $60 for a game thinking that they've got a complete package and could be surprised if their new players to find that suddenly content they were able to access has become gated off unless they drop another 20 on the thing. I see this and then I see corporate mouthpieces, sometimes developers, sometimes just clueless chumps who are in the thrall of their favourite corporate entity. In fact, it's usually that latter lot because like I said, this is mostly a myth. Still banging that $60 drum that games are too expensive to make and we never raise the prices. What rot, what garbage, what trash, what hot flaming insect covered shite. People give me shit for calling Destiny an MMO and I mostly do it because Bungie was so desperate to tell people it wasn't an MMO even while they copied a lot of MMO ideas. And here we are with a distinctly MMO idea. MMOs have been known to lock players out of previously accessible content when a new expansion rolls around. And I've seen that used to excuse what Bungie's done here, but Bungie said it wasn't an MMO, so why is it doing it? Fucking MMO. So once again, I don't want to hear this fucking shit about how games never rose their prices. If you want full access to Destiny 2 right now and you didn't buy the season pass, this game costs 60 plus the 20 for Curse of Osiris. That's $80. As of Tuesday, Destiny 2 costs $80. That seems a bit more than 60 the last I checked. It's almost as if games raised their prices in a way that was subtle and insidious. But that's so out of character for the game industry. Subtle and insidious is, well, it's just nothing that would ever cross the mind of a video game company. 
So anyway, here's this job posting from Bungie. It's got nothing to do with subtle insidiousness, so I don't know why you'd think that I'm just posting this. Just while we're on the topic of Bungie, you know. So if you're interested in working for Bungie, here's what they want you to do. Create sustainable player progression and chase through Destiny 2's bright engram. Work closely with our live leadership team to craft a long-term vision for the Eververse and its presence in the Destiny IP. Work closely with our live product manager to analyse key performance indicators to inform design. Design and implement new features and systems with an eye on engagement, retention and monetization. Use data and design sensibilities to define strategies for maintaining ideal engagement patterns and maximising player satisfaction. Work with Destiny 2 leadership to help define a cohesive monetization experience across multiple expansions and seasons. Manage and create craft growth and progression designers on the Eververse team and help establish a strong design culture. <laughs> that last bit was worms pouring in their thousands from the mouth of an executive at Activision. It's obviously no surprise by now that Activision Blizzard is looking for any way it can to trick, tantalize and trip up players in their bid to get as much money out of them as possible. The entire post-20 leveling system gives you bright engrams which you take to a paid store to unlock. Call of Duty World War II turns a loot box opening into a social spectacle so that everyone can gather around and be jealous of the winnings. Activision literally patented microtransaction based matchmaking to psychologically drag its players toward monetization strategies. Activision is so fueled by fucking avarice that it can't even do a remaster right. I won't go over the fact that it resold DLC maps for Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare Remastered, or the fact that it was originally held to ransom, or the fact they patched microtransactions into it, but I just did, so fuck you. Activision is after your money by hook or by crook, emphasis on the crook, and at this point I would view their intrusions into your brains and wallets as nothing less than hostile. Fuck Activision Blizzard, fuck it with a Daedric helmet.